Everybody look back in that corner at the far side of the room where it's real dark behind that chair. I'm going to turn on a very, very bright light, and I want you all to watch the cockroaches scatter. For tonight, I'm going to read verbatim to you from a book that we found in a dusty shelf far back in the rear of a used bookstore that proves beyond any shadow of a doubt that what I've been revealing to you in the segment, the many segments of the series entitled The Mystery Schools on this program, The Hour of the Time, has been not only true, but right on target. And the first time that this information has ever been exposed in its entirety to the people of the world. Now, you had better go to the used bookstores in your cities, and you'd better get there before the cockroaches get there, because I tell you now, they know that we are searching for proof and that we are digging for the evidence that we will use in the future to hang them by their own rope. You need to get there first and buy any and every book that is concerned with any and every secret society, mystery, religion, or cult that you can find. If you don't understand them, and if you don't want to use them to help us expose these people, then send those books to us, because we will put them to the best use. I'm holding in my hand an old, faded, what used to be red, hardbacked, covered book. It's almost orange now, because it's faded with age, entitled Fundamental Laws, 68th Convocation. On the front of the cover is some of the symbology of the mystery schools. There is a rope representing the snake eating its own tail, also known as the magic circle. Within this magic circle, there is a triangle, actually three triangles, one within the other. Within the triangles, there is the symbol of the skull and bones. There is the symbol of wings around the world. There's the symbol of the arc, the anchor, and the three letters T-R-Y beneath the three triangles. This is the verbatim written report published in 1916, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm going to read to you from. Fundamental Laws, a report of the 68th Convocation of the Rose Cross Order giving a resume of the proceedings of the convocation together with most of the lectures that were delivered during this time of the convocation by the several delegates present. Also a report of the work of ancient initiation in the Grove of Osiris as especially prepared for the occasion. Below that is the symbol of a triangle with three stone steps representing the three degrees of initiation. Up on the top step is a cross, in the center of which is a rose. And beneath the triangle, again, the three letters, T-R-Y. This is copyrighted 1916, published by the Philosophical Publishing Company, Allentown, Pennsylvania, for the members of the Rose Cross Order. On the next page is a roll of honor. One of the names here stands out and almost knocked me over when I saw it, for the name is Lars Hansen. Now, it is not the Lars Hansen that we've discussed on this show, and we're going to look into it to find out if this was his father or grandfather or great-grandfather. could have been either one of the three. But we will find out, believe me. 
We know that Lars Hansen's parents were members of the Mystery School, and in particular, the Metternich Stell group, where Lars Hansen was reared. An explanation of the contents of this book, and I'm reading verbatim from the introduction in explanation. In explanation of the contents of this book, it is to be stated that these articles do not give the inner work of the Rose Cross Order, but simply the outer, the public teachings. Now you'll remember in the Mystery School series, I taught you about the exoteric and the esoteric. What you're going to get in this book, because they never publish the esoteric anywhere, it's always hidden in symbology, but there are incredible admissions in this book that you will hear in the exoteric. Reading again, verbatim. The Illuminati and its soul science work may be called the child of the Rose Cross Order. Years ago it was found that where there was one person who desired to follow the work with heart and soul, in other words, who was willing to live the life as taught by the order, there were an hundred others who desired teachings from the order, but who were not willing to dedicate their lives to the sublime work. Now I break from this for a moment to remind you that I have previously stated that the fraternity of Freemasons, the ancient order of the Rose and Cross, the Sovereign and Military Order of the Knights of Malta, the Knights Templars, the Mormon Church, all of these, the Illuminati, the Order, the Skull and Bones, are all the same organization. And what you have just heard is the first admission of that fact. And you are going to hear more as I progress. And remember, I'm reading this right out of their own publication, a hard-bound book published by the Philosophical Society in Allentown, Pennsylvania, specifically for the Rose Cross Order. Continuing, these thousands had to be taken care of, and as a result, the Illuminati and its soul science work was born. When in April, now that's April of 1916, folks, April of 1916, remember that. When in April, the order went forth, to the brethren that a sacred convocation was to be held. All delegates were requested to prepare articles on soul science so that regular lecture sessions could be held. The lectures that follow are the result. All these lectures were given in open session and are to be considered as soul science work, though in entire harmony with the teachings of the Rose Cross Order. The work of the Rose Cross Order as given to its students can never be published. It is a secret, sacred work between teacher and student. Let me read that again for you. It is a secret, sacred work between teacher and student. It is a soul training, an inner initiation, and such work continues until the student has reached initiation, after which he is called upon to attend a convocation, and at which time the degree work is conferred upon him. But the inner work always precedes the outer work, as the outer work is only a bond binding together the brotherhood. Thus a word in explanation. Many having heard of the great order and its work, and actually knowing nothing of its inner work, have ignorantly or with fraudulent intent established so-called Rose Cross bodies. And these bodies, knowing nothing of the true work of the Rose Cross, have nothing but a ritualistic, initiatory, right or degree work. We would refer all seekers to authorities on the Rose Cross and on initiation, and they will then find that the true Rose Cross is actually a school of spirituality with a degree ceremonial initiation as the climax. And this is signed by the Hierophant of the Order. In the preface, early in the summer, instructions were received from the hierarchies to call the inner circle of the Rose Cross Order into session, and thus to fitly celebrate the 68th year of the Rose Cross Order in America. Orders were immediately issued to those who have the privilege of attending this convocation, and on June the 1st, 1916, the convocation was called to order, and the preliminary lectures were started. At this 